The weather is changing and summer might just be around the corner. So a quick general greenhouse update for you guys today who are growing along with us. Let's talk about the courgettes and the fact they're not doing so well. And the peppers and the tomatoes, which are both fruiting. And I'll give you a quick update on the herbs as well. So let's start with the courgettes. <laughs> So what I need to do then, I told you before that I put courgettes out far too early and they've been trashed, so I'm going to replace them. This is one of those things we all do. In trying to get a jump on things, sometimes it's a risk. So I don't know if any of my courgettes will actually survive and properly fruit this year, because to be honest, I just sowed them all far too early. So the ones that were out look absolutely appalling. I'm going to replace them with these. These guys are starting to struggle in the greenhouse now because they're in these little pots. But fingers crossed, planting them out. Hang on. Penny, stop eating that. Fingers crossed. Um, they'll just come on once they're out and they'll really flourish. So here goes. I'm getting on a bit. My knees don't cope the way they used to. So, believe it or not, there was a courgette here. Yeah, not anymore. Okay, so, for those of you who are from the US, because Tim asked this before, courgettes, in the US they're called zucchinis, we call them courgettes. Um, they do prefer warmer weather, so really sensible people don't put them outside in a Scottish garden until June when it starts to properly warm up. I tried to get a rush on things. So that one totally hated it and completely died. These two I've had to prune so many times because the leaves were just getting trashed. They're actually looking a bit better now, so I might be able to save them. So, Lindsay, you might be in luck, but these guys from the greenhouse, I could tell they were starting to struggle because they were really losing their colour and going yellow. And, you know, in these little pots, you can kind of understand why they must be using up all the nutrients really fast. So, I'm just going to replace them. So again, as always, when you're putting anything from a pot into the ground, just break up the roots at the bottom slightly, just slightly, and that'll encourage it to grow new roots. Now, one of the things, I've heard that you should plant courgettes on a mound so they're on a hill and all the water runs down into a channel around it for the roots. I've heard the opposite, that you should plant them in a ditch so that all the water pools at the roots. I don't know what's right, I've tried both, I haven't seen any benefits of any of them. Um, I just plant them flat and just make sure I water them. So. Just real life gardening. All I've done is just trimmed off any stuff that's dying, any of the debris. So there we go. So you can see, even the ones that didn't die, the ones in the greenhouse just look that wee bit healthier. So fingers crossed. And I should tell you, these are Courgette Tuscany. That's the variety. Or at least, as if I haven't mixed them up.
I've spoken to you guys about mulch before. For plants like courgettes that like a lot of water, mulch is really useful because it helps to stop evaporation from the soil. So if you haven't seen the video about mulch, go and have a wee look. It's up in the top left for you. It's handy just to know about. new healthy courgettes. I'll give them a good water in and then fingers crossed they take. I know I still haven't put the hinges back, I'm doing it today. Okay, so we're in the greenhouse. Um, I feel a bit weird because I feel like I show you this guy so often on YouTube and on the social media channels. So I kind of feel like I don't have a real update for you because you know what's going on. So I'm going to do um, a bit of a go around and what's happening in here and talk about just basically all the excitements, the highs, the lows, things to watch out for and the fact we have tomatoes. Right, so let's start then with the tomatoes. First thing you can see this guy is now way bigger than me, okay? Um, not all of them, these two are kind of this size. So these two are the Gardener's Delight. This one is the Sun Gold. And the little Roma, still kind of much smaller than the other two, but that's expected. The Roma is a bush tomato, so he should be smaller. Now, the big excitement obviously has been that I've had my first ripe tomato. In fact, we've had four tomatoes now and there's more on the plant that are ripe. Just the sun gold. Gardener's Delight haven't ripened yet and the Roma haven't ripened yet but all of the plants have tomatoes on them so that is crazy compared to other years because normally at this time, so we're on the very last day of May now, uh, normally at this time of year my tomatoes and peppers are all still very very small, they're just being planted out in the greenhouse, so we are so far ahead this year. Um, but as you guys know it wasn't without its issues, so one of the things was moving the tomatoes out into the greenhouse when it's not the right time of year, it's not warm enough, it did stress them out and we had that problem where they just weren't taking up the nutrients. Um, hopefully I'm on top of that now. Um, I did have another scare, it happened again last week and it turned out um, I had bumped the switch on the heater and turned the heat down again. So something you need to be really aware of at this time of year. Um, however, I was thinking about that because, like I said, I always put my tomato plants in the greenhouse roughly now or I've sown them and they've grown in the greenhouse and they're usually little plants by now but they're normally very small plants that haven't even flowered by now whereas these guys were quite sizable they had flowers and tomatoes on them so these guys needed those nutrients much more so it was probably just that that emphasised the issue whereas on a tiny little plant didn't see it because it wasn't as it wasn't basically as essential for them to get all of those nutrients, whereas in the big plants it was. So again, it's awesome because it's all about learning. And this is the first year I've done this. I'm learning stuff. But as you can see, these guys are doing awesome. Now, the other change in here is the peppers. Firstly, the change is that I've actually put this stage in back up. So let me show you. So these are back up to this kind of height now, um, which I can do because this type of sweet pepper plant doesn't get too tall. I've had plants in previous years that were almost as tall as the tomatoes, um, so that's why I instantly put this down to floor level. These guys apparently don't get that big, so I have raised it. And it's a personal thing for me. For me, it was very much a mental health thing. I was starting to really struggle in here because I didn't have a lot of space. It was feeling cluttered and messy because I had nowhere to put things. And I really missed having that shelf. Um, so again, it's a personal thing for me. So they're now back up at this height. Now, the good thing at them being at this height is it's easy for me to get into the flowers for pollinating. Because as I've said in previous videos, if you're growing 
things like peppers, courgettes, all that kind of stuff in a greenhouse. You don't get as much um, of the traffic from the pollinating insects. So you sometimes need to give your plants a little help in hand. And the way you do that is just a soft paintbrush, cotton bud, Q-tip, whatever you call them. And all you're doing is just collecting the pollen from the flowers and then moving that around the other flowers. And I just do that a few times on each flower just to make sure that I get anything moved around. And I come in and do that a few times a week. So again, if this is all new to you, I'll put a video up there. I did a video a few years ago. Um, it's a very, very old Eli video. It's not as plush production wise as these days, but you know, it gives you the idea about pollinating your tomatoes and your peppers. So yeah, so big news on the pepper front. I have one, two, three peppers on this plant. Okay. Now, obviously they are not huge. They're just small at the minute, but Sorry, I have this thing. This is one of my things. I have to pull the dead petals off the peppers when they appear. It's just an Eli thing. Neat and tidy. <laughs> yeah, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I'm doing it again. You're all seeing all my weird things now. I've got five peppers, small peppers on this plant. One. Yep, I've got one on this plant, nothing yet on these. So an interesting thing to tell you then about that I have noticed. You can see that this plant is really tall compared to the others. This plant is the second biggest. These plants are smaller. The way I had them arranged, this plant was right at the front and getting the most amount of light and it has really grown up. It's strong, it's got lots of stems, it's, it's bushy, it's got more fruit on it, more flowers on it. This one's coming in second because these guys were further back and they weren't getting as much light at all. So these are much smaller. So I've moved them around now. The other thing, pepper, I've just poured water all over my foot and I've got canvas shoes on. The pepper plant that's in the DIY self-watering pot is doing really well. I'm going to put it down because it's really heavy. <sighs> Soggy shoe. Yeah, so it's doing awesome as well. Um, not as big as these guys, but again, it's to do with where it is in the greenhouse, how much light it's getting, because I don't actually have space for five plants. That's the problem. But it's doing really well, so I don't want to get rid of it. Um, yeah, hmm. <laughs> we'll see how we go. But yeah, so the peppers are looking awesome. Now, the other thing that's happening in here, this year is my first ever year grown calendula. I'm so excited. Um, I'm also very behind. I haven't got any of this stuff planted out yet and I should. Um, but look, it's got a flower. How exciting. Yeah, so I've got that tree ah. and this tree of calendula all to go out. What I'm also going to do is adjust with a shelving because of the peppers. Because again, it's my first year proper year growing with shelving in the greenhouse. It's a relatively new thing and I'm kind of working it out. So I, I'm finding the shelves are awesome in terms of storage, but they block out some of the light and that annoys me a bit. Um, but also quite a few of you guys have asked me where I got my shelves. Um, I don't recommend these shelves, I have to be honest. I really don't rate them at all. They're handy for storage, but they're really, to me, they're just really poor quality. Um, so I don't recommend them. So if you're looking for shelves, go out and have a look and do your own research. Um, I'm not going to recommend these ones because I don't think they're good enough, basically. But I've got more calendulas over here as well. Remember I took those little cuttings from the salvia? Two of them survived right through winter. Now, they still look a little bit purple. These guys really suffered as well with the cold in here, but they're coming back now. But I'm really chuffed. 
quite excited. I love this plant. And the last thing in here was, remember the mystery plant? I still don't know what it is. If anybody knows, because I know better than to say it's got to be something that I sowed seeds for, because in the past I've had random things grow in here. Um, I kind of assumed it was some sort of sunflower, but I'm not sure now. Don't know. But I'm going to keep it going because I'm curious. I bet it turns out to be some really nasty weed that I don't want. But it's the mystery plant. So that's us for today in the Grow Along with Eli. Um, because there are a few things I'm going to do separate. So we're going to do a carrot video separately because I want to actually pull a carrot with you guys and show you the carrots. So we're going to do that. Um, and also there's going to be a video about the herbs and the fact that something is munching my basil because something is now also munching my peppers and I'm not amused. Um, I think it's earwigs again. I had earwig problems before. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about that in the next video because you know that I was testing out the neem cake meal. This stuff, I'm testing it out to see if it's good as the plain neem oil spray that I used last year. So um, I've now made my decisions and I'm going to do a video comparing the two and telling you about them. So I hope today has been a bit of fun for anyone who's grown the same plants as me, grown along with me, so that you can see all the things that are happening for me, the problems I've had and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully it helps you guys. Right. On that note, remember, watch the videos all the way through if you find them interesting, engage with the videos, like them, comment on them, subscribe to the channel, share them amongst your friends and, right I'm going to stop preaching now, have fun guys and I will see you in the next video.